The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hey, exactly. Uh, welcome to uh, this version, latest installment of our webinar series. Uh, you are at the right place. Uh, we're just going to give it a couple more minutes uh, as folks gather here. So please uh, hold tight. We'll start a couple minutes past the hour. All right, folks, let's, uh, let's get started today. Uh, welcome to the um, latest in webinar series. Uh, today we're going we're gonna to talk a little bit about financing uh, and uh, not only how technology is changing uh, the world of heavy equipment financing, but how that is uh, being integrated into the Iron Planet marketplace and impacting uh, you know, the, per the buying and selling of equipment. So before we get started, let me just go over uh, the setup and the, you know, the ground rules uh, per se. So, you know, as always, we, we record these sessions. Uh, you know, that's beneficial because, you know, you can actually send that to your, your boss or your wife later on to prove that you were actually doing something constructive. Um, uh, so we're going to record this session. It will be available online afterwards uh, for distribution. Um, secondly, what we'd like to do is we'd like to um, go through the material first and then, you know, hold all questions until the end. Uh, questions can be entered uh, by using the, the little chat box uh, in your GoToMeeting uh, application. Uh, you can enter those at any time and then, you know, once uh, we are done going through the material, uh, we will we will we will go through the Q and A session at that time. So, as I mentioned, uh, you know, my name is Matt Ackley. I'm the I'm the CMO of Iron Planet, and uh, we have a we have a really really you know interesting session today. So, if you think about if you think about what Iron Planet has you know been trying to achieve over the last well, we've been in business now 16 years. Right, it's really you know it's really bringing the world of e-commerce to the heavy equipment industry. Right, we are we are an online marketplace, predominantly online marketplace, and you know day in day out. Right, when we get up in the morning, we think about you know how do we bring data, how do we bring technology, you know how do we bring innovation, right, to the effort of you know connecting buyers and sellers. Right, the idea being the more buyers and more sellers we connect. The more efficient, the more efficiently we can do that, the the the, the more volume uh, will move through the marketplace. 
Well, today's you know guest speaker uh, that we have the folks from Currency, and and they are they are you know if you think about it, they're doing the same thing in the financing world. So the financing world, the heavy equipment financing world, has been around for a long time, right? And and what we have here is we have a bunch of folks who you know come up with an idea of how we take that those same concepts, data, technology, and how do we improve the world of heavy equipment financing. So I am going to I'm going to turn it over to the currency folks. We've been working with currency for about two and a, you know a little over two years now. Uh, they're integrated in the marketplace. They make it easy. They, they they provide an easy payment solution for buyers out there and for you sellers out there. Right? They help Iron Planet you know move more volume. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to uh, Corey from Currency and we're and we're going to get started. Thank you, Matt. Uh, appreciate the introduction. Uh, my name is Wesley Lonis. I'm president here at Currency and one of the founders. I also have with me uh, Logan Murphy. Logan is our head of sales and so responsible for all things uh, revenue oriented, uh, but, but wears many hats in addition to that. So I, and, and Matt gave a, a fantastic introduction to this webinar. Thank you uh, everyone for, for attending today, whether you're on the buyer or the seller side. Um, we're excited to be presenting to you today and, and hopefully we'll share some information with you that, that is valuable and, and will help you uh, in, engage in um, you know, better financing and better understanding of the financing uh, optionality out there in the market today. And uh, we'll, we'll reiterate that at the end, please ask questions. Uh, sometimes it takes a little bit to get the questions going, but um, if you're thinking it, Absolutely, there's somebody else uh, on, on the line today that is thinking the same thing. So please ask the questions. We'd be happy to answer. Uh, there's nothing off limits. So I'll give a quick 60-second overview of currency, and then I'm going to hand it over to Logan, and he is going to walk through the slides, and then it will be a, a bit of a free form. In addition, uh, Matt and I will probably jump in and, and share some commentary along the way. So currency, who is currency? Currency um, is our what, who we are, what we're doing is we are uh, essentially, our vision is a globally connected equipment finance exchange uh, and, and connecting buyers, sellers, and importantly lenders um, to lead the offline, which is your traditional financing, where you walk in and, and you, know, you fill out a piece of paper, or you fax it in, you know, or, or hand it across the desk, uh, lead that, that sort of offline traditional financing um, transition to the online world where is where it's held and sort of housed in the web and mobile space. Uh, we're going to go through a number of statistics today that are going to speak to that, but but you'll see there is a significant shift that began several years ago. Um, depending on who you ask, 2011, 12-ish, we began to see it on our end and and are now leading that that charge and and building out innovation and technology to ultimately remove friction in the finance process for equipment of all types and all geographies. So we're agnostic as to the, to the type of equipment. We love heavy equipment, um, but, but we also are, are excited to, to finance um, any type of equipment in, in any part of the U.S. and Canada, and then ultimately going global. Uh, so we've, through our technology, which you'll see today, we've made it uh, easy, uh, process, it's fast, and you have uh, I, in ideally the best financing option for you as a buyer and or as a seller for your customers or for you as a seller buying equipment that you ultimately want to sell. So we can hit, we hit all three, four of those different options there. Um, so I'm going to turn it over to Logan. He's going to get into uh, to more detail and then uh, we'll, we'll answer questions at the end. Thank you, Wesley. Um, so just want to kind of reiterate, thank you for kind of joining us today um, and, and specifically the audience. I'm ex excited to kind of talk about the, the global shift that Matt was describing that they saw and they've been kind of uh, pioneering now for almost two decades and that we saw, uh, as Wesley alluded to, but really the global shift in the equipment purchase experience, right, from the search to the finding of the equipment, to the selling of the equipment, to the buying of the equipment, and now to the financing of the equipment or the payment of the equipment. So to kind of holistically give us a good place to start, I want to kind of talk about the size 
of the market or the size of the opportunity that we're describing today. So in, in general, in the equipment purchase space, small business equipment purchase space, we're talking about $1.6 trillion of equipment purchases. Now, $1.1 trillion of those dollars today, as it exists today, is finance. So as we see, a large percentage of the actual equipment purchase market is made up of finance in a, in a variety of vehicles, right? Lines of credit, traditional finance, non-traditional finance, um, all kinds of things. So as recently as 2016, what we were seeing was eight out of 10 businesses use at least one form of financing when acquiring equipment. So that's already up 6% from the same study in 2013. So as we kind of alluded to on the 2012, 2011, 2013 trend that we were seeing, we're already seeing a growth in that first kind of domino effect that happened. Now to put those numbers in perspective, so 1.6 trillion, 1.1 trillion, those are large numbers and I have trouble kind of getting my head around those sometimes. So I, I like to break it down and, and let's, let's put some pers perspective on it. What does that mean yearly, monthly, daily? That's 22 million units of equipment purchases happening a year. That's 1.8 million units a month, and that's 61,000 units a day. And that's an environment, which I'm going to discuss in these later slides, with a pretty a friction process, right? We're, talking, we're going to talk about the evolution to a frictionless process that we're kind of going into, but a lot of these numbers are impacted by a, fric a, a very friction-filled process. But still, the demand you can see is there. Small businesses are buying, selling, and purchasing equipment. Everyone on the phone today has gone through one, one version or another of acquiring financing to do something for their business or do something for a, a company that they know. So let's kind of describe why would a business finance in general, right? What are the, let's call the top five reasons small businesses finance? Number one is keeping up to date with inventory. They're acquiring new and advanced equipment and they could without financing. What that means is they're now not having to get an extra, you know, two years out of a piece of equipment because they don't want to put down, you know, a bunch of cash and, and uh, you know, soak up that cash flow and wait another one year to, to get net profit out of that piece of equipment, right? So they're, they're really able to take advantage of increasing their inventory from, you know, your perspective, increasing their inventory from a buyer perspective or from a seller perspective, um, and, and they're able to do that without soaking up their cash flow, which leads us into number two, right? Small ca cash or capital is the lifeblood to small businesses. It's a lifeblood to all of our businesses. So they're able, being able to limit your expense or having to outlay all that cash up front and then wait for the revenue to come in is a pretty big factor in why businesses are, are using financing to you know, make, make their purchases. They're, they're able to save their cash for any sort of expansion plans they have, moving facilities, buying a bigger facility, any sort of improvements they have, any marketing that they want to do. They can use their cash for today revenue generating activities, not using their cash to put a lump sum down on a crane and then wait for six months when that, that actually returns a profit for them. Um, another big massive reason we're seeing in the shift of why businesses are financing is the abil availability to customize your structure of payments. Now, what that means is, in a traditional world, you, you, know, you go to the bank, you get an approval, and they give you one payment option. You pay a monthly payment back. It's a fixed payment, and you're paying it over a five, six, seven-year term, right? Well, if you're a business that you know, doesn't run perfectly in terms of cash flow out through the year, and you have you know, high seasons and low seasons in terms of uh, income fluctuations, that doesn't really make a lot of sense for you, and it, and, and it does put a, a strain on a business depending on if you're in a high season or low season, right? So what you're able to do in, in, in this environment, in this platform, is you can customize your payment structure. And what that means in practical terms is, let's say that you have a business, but you know you have a, a your high season is quarter one and your low season is quarter three. You know you have the ability to schedule you know a, a quarterly payment schedule, a biannually payment schedule, a once a year payment schedule, or an annually payment schedule. You also have the ability to set your payments based on your cash flow, meaning. If you have, if quarter one's a heavy quarter for you and you have a ton of income coming in for that quarter and that's where your season is, is the best, you can actually pay more in that, in that season, right? And then when you're going through, let's say, a winter time when it's not the best, you can actually lower your payments to match your cash flow. So by a kind of a percentage basis, the impact on your cash flow should match how your business operates. The goal is to make sure you're generating revenue on this piece of equipment so it makes sense for you to obviously keep using it, right? It doesn't put too much strain on the business. 
Another big, big reason that people have moved to purchasing equipment and financing equipment in general is your ability to bundle that equipment with different kind of purchases that have to do with that equipment. So what I mean by that is installation cost, shipping cost, maintenance of the equipment, warranty information. So in the finance world, that's called, you know, quote unquote, soft cost, right? So usually in the equipment finance world, you're able to bundle in the installation cost, right? So let's say they have a you know, $2,000 installation cost. You're able to bundle that into your finance payment. So instead of having to pay out, out of pocket in cash for when someone comes and installs it or the maintenance on it or the warranty on it, you're able to bundle that in to one single payment, right, that you customize based on your business. You can get everything that you need at once. So you're, you can get on the road as quick as possible or get that equipment generating revenue as quick as possible for you. Number five kind of ties into all of it, right? It's the reason that the payments are customized. It's the reason that you can bundle your equipment. It's the reason there's low upfront capital that needed to, to purchase the equipment. It's you're able to accelerate your ROI on all purchases. Now, what we mean by that is you buy a piece of equipment, and again, instead of waiting, let's say you had to put you know sixty thousand dollars you know down to, to purchase that Bobcat, and you have to wait you know six to eight months until that Bobcat makes you sixty thousand dollars, so you're back in the black you're able to actually make sure your monthly payment is less, right, or at least equal to your revenue that you're creating every month on that piece of equipment. So your net gain on day one is positive versus you having to take a step back for your business and wait for that equipment to generate revenue to then do other things with your business. So I kind of want to go through where, where financing was, right, when we were looking at it and kind of as we described the old process, right? And the old process still exists today if you walk in and, and walk into somebody's banks, but let's just kind of walk through it. I know everyone everyone has the same experience. Uh, we have it on, on this side. I'm sure you guys have it on that side. So not, we're not going to tell you anything you don't know here. But let's just walk through the traditional equipment financing process as it existed, you know, in uniform before and exists, you know, in, in perpetuity today. So the traditional loan application used to take anywhere from five to six weeks just to complete the initial paperwork. Now what I mean by complete initial paperwork means the application for that specific bank, right? Any sort of income information, any sort of bank statements or financials or invoice or what kind of equipment you were buying or a site inspection, right? So there was all this paperwork gathering it five to six weeks just to gather it and get it in an underwriter's queue. After that, the actual underwriting process, which was one person or a committee of people, could take two to three weeks, right? And they two to three weeks to render an initial decision. And I'm sure as everyone's experienced, that initial decision is usually not the decision that you needed the first time, right? It's either a pending decision, they decline it for some reason, for some reason, excuse me, or they approve the transaction, but they approve the transaction on different terms than you were expecting, so it makes you have to adjust your process that you walked in there with. So now we're at best case scenario, we're nine weeks from our initial decision to purchase this equipment. So in total, best case scenario, the bank comes back, you take six weeks to do the application process and the paperwork, the bank comes back in two to three weeks from that time and gives you an approval, best case scenario. Then they, so if you look at that, that's maybe three months from your decision to purchase the equipment to when you're actually going to get the equipment financed. Three months is a massive amount of time, obviously, and a lot of things happen in business in three months, right? You probably lost out on contracts. You probably lost out on an opportunity. Maybe a machine went down, you weren't able to replace it, so you can't even keep the same revenue that you were at before. Three months is just too long in this day and age and for small businesses to be able to get the equipment that they need without having to use their own cash to do it and make, you know, have to basically play uh, the decision game on what do, I, what do I sacrifice to do this today. So in, in kind of building on the old and, and where we're seeing the shift, and really the global, the, the global goal of this webinar is, is, is a shift to mobile, right? So we, we, as we've seen on the shift to mobile, we've seen business owners are increasingly searching for streamlined financing at the point of sale through their mobile device. What that means is, as I described to you before, remember that three month period that we were talking about that it takes when you wanted to buy the equipment to when you can actually get it financed? What business owners want today, what you want today, as we've heard you, is you want to be able to finance the equipment and buy the equipment when you see it, not waiting to walk into a bank or walk into you know, six different banks and fill out six different applications to wait you know, six months to figure it out. Most likely that piece of equipment is, is gone, right? You have to find a new one. So matching up the financing and the finding of the equipment at the same time has been pretty paramount. 
So according to you know, a recent Google study, we check our phones about 150 times a day. I can definitely say that I'm, I'm guilty of that. 82% uh, of smartphone users consult their phone about an upcoming equipment purchase. Now that means they're, they're searching in, in, in a variety of ways, right? Reviews or listings or checking warranty information or just seeing what's available out there, right? 90% of smartphone users say they've used their phones to make progress toward a short-term or long-term goal. That means they're picking up their phone and one of those 150 times a day and they're thinking either short term, what do I need now, and I need a solution for that. And also, I'm planning for the long term, and where's my solution for the long term. So what we're seeing is it's all starting mobile. It's all starting on their phone. And the, the shift to mobile is just on a behavior aspect. The better, obviously, we are as a group to get there, um, we can kind of match up with that behavior. So on any given day on our side, in our ecosystem through an iron planet, uh, a mobile device searching can reach anywhere from 70%. So this percentage continues to steadily rise, about 5 to 7 percent month over month. So it's a huge shift in how people are coming to Iron Planet or coming through searching for financing or just coming and searching for equipment, right? On any given day, the percentage of people coming into our homepage through a mobile device can reach 55 percent. And that's up from 25 percent in Q2 of 2016. So you see a massive increase in that shift to mobile. Everything, every every decision is really starting on mobile, and it's that's where that's where their choices are are really becoming uh, kind of foundational. And then they're going and having to go through different means because obviously not everything is on on mobile today. Yeah, and this is you know just jumping in here. This is Matt. Um, you know, those of you who've listened to to our prior uh, our prior webinars, right? You know, you, you probably or and those of you who haven't, you can understand why this is happening. I mean, if you look at you know, you know, you know. As we pointed out, right? People are on their mobile devices. Well, that's actually now the easiest way to reach people when it comes to marketing, right? So whether it's Google, whether it's Facebook, whether it's Bing, whether it's LinkedIn, right? When you're out there trying to, you know, when we're out there trying to market, you know, uh, you know, actively and aggressively market this equipment, we have found that you know the best tools, the best, the best timing, uh, the best source of traffic uh, at the best cost is, is now mobile. Right, just because of the way people are checking their phones, you know, in this industry, you know, I always hear, well, you know, the the brochure, the magazine sits on the desk. Well, you look at those stats you saw before, and the amount of time people check their mobile phone, whether they're in their car, right, whether they're at the bank, whether they're in the grocery store, right. We have seen, you know, our ability to reach those people and drive that traffic to Iron Planet, you know, grow leaps and bounds, you know, based on that. And so I think, you know, some of this data here were where, you know, and why, why, why currency is so interesting is because they have a mobile optimized solution, we're able to create that seamless mobile experience for, for the buyer. Got it. Yeah, thank you. Appreciate that, Matt. So kind of moving on and, and building on the shift to mobile, let's describe, we talked about the old, right? We talked about the, the old process that we've all been through. Um, and, and how arduous and, and friction-filled that is. We talked about how a customer is now shifting to mobile um, in their search functions, and their solutions need to be mobile-oriented, right? Or mobile, uh, need to have mobile solutions to their to their financing needs or their searching needs. So let's talk about the new. What's available in the new kind of environment or through this platform that we're talking about today? So today, if you look at a Iron Planet listing, and this one, as you see on the screen, is a mini excavator. And if you see right underneath the add to watch list, there's a green, what we call a power dollar or a green dollar sign, right? That button says get instant funding with low monthly payment. Now, what that button allows to do, it's, it's a super simple process. And, and you know, I, hope, I opened the Q&A to, to make sure that it is simple on the backside. So please, if you have any questions, let's just at the end um, that are more detailed, let's, let's get into it. But a customer, what you're, or you would click on that power dollar, go through a quick questionnaire, and instead of going through as we talked about, one bank and waiting five to six weeks to get all the information through there, waiting two to three weeks to get the approval or dependent or decline decision, right? And then having to go to the next bank and the next bank and the next bank, you're able to fill out one application, all electronically, all online. You're able to get a decision, so the application, then you're on underwriting. You're able to get a decision and you're able to get funding 24 hours from when you clicked on that power dollar. And all of it has the ability to be complete, uh, completed electronically. It all has the ability to complete electronically, 
And you also have the option to talk to somebody through the process as well, which is obviously really important, right? We're financing something for our business. We want to make sure that we're taking the best option possible. So you know, we encourage you, if you need to speak to somebody at any time, that option is always available to you. So to talk about the new and really put that in perspective, it's we went from going to one bank for three months and waiting for a decision, and that decision didn't work out. We got to go to another bank and another bank and another bank. It could take us a year to get the financing that we wanted, right, in a perfect world. This is now one application, and you're able to send that application into our platform, which has some of those same banks you would walk into and take three months, some of different, some more options that are more global or more national, right? And they're now competing for the business. So kind of building on the new, we'll talk about how, how, how it looks on the mobile device and, and where we're going in terms of mobile. So you see it, it looks, it looks similar, right? But let's walk through this a little bit slower so we can see how it actually, how it actually operates. <clears throat> you see the same thing. This customer, or you're looking for a pipe handler. You find a pipe handler on Google, it brings up an Iron Planet listing, that pipe handler is $14,500, right? You want to place a bid, you want to place a bid for a, a, an X amount. But in terms of buying power, you're not really sure this is an auction, so it might go higher. And you only want to pay $10,000 in cash, let's say. So in that environment, what you can do is you can click on the link that says get funding, get instant funding and low monthly payments, and you walk through the questionnaire that we described. And it's super simple, super easy. It's all questions that you know the answers to off the top of your head. You don't need to run and go and get a document from somewhere or, or look for something else in a file cabinet. It's all information that's readily available to you, just, just about your business. And you run through that questionnaire, and that questionnaire is going to dictate a bunch, a bunch of things. One, it's going to dictate where this transaction you know, makes the perfect sense in terms of the marketplace. Who's going to give you the best option back in terms of what your needs are? back to that customized payment opportunity. So depending on your needs and your, your cash flow of your business and the seasonality or non-seasonality of your business, it's going to render back options back to you. And options is all we're talking about today. Those options obviously give you decision-making decision power. As you see on the options, go back to that, that banking analogy, right? You're at one bank. You're filling out one application. You're going through one process. And then you go into the next bank and you fill out another application and you're probably answering the same question 10, 12, 14 times sometimes before you get an approval or get a decision. This is at the point of decision when you find the equipment, you're able to fill out one quick form that you're going to know off the top of your head the information. You're able to get a bevy of options from a variety of institutions and banks and you're able to choose the option that makes sense for you Right? So one application versus 10 applications, you're able to get options back without having to go to nine different banks or call nine different people, and you can choose what's best for your business. Now the availability for this to be all automated is there. You can go through this whole process and not have to talk to somebody, but we always have someone there if you need someone to walk you through the process, or if you need someone to custom, even uh, more customize your options. If the options that came back don't make sense or you're looking for something a little more customized, the opportunity to talk to somebody is paramount and it's big and we understand it. So we always have someone on the other end of that line that's a specialist in what we do and a specialist in that asset class. They're going to know. You're talking to someone who knows what, knows what they're doing. You know what you're doing for your business. So the person you're talking to at the other end is, is, a, is a really good source of information to walk you through and also um, kind of talk to you exactly what you need and customize an option that uh, you may not see. And, and this has been, you know, from, from the Iron Planet side, this has been really, really great to, 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 to be able to integrate a service like this so, so completely into, into our platform because, you know, I mean, the, the friction points in any marketplace, right, you know, there, there's probably two that are associated with the transaction. You know, one is payments and one is shipping. Um, and, you know, from, from a payment standpoint, specifically in this space, you know, we're not talking about $10 items, we're talking about finance items. So, you know, being online is all about expediency, it's all about convenience, right? It's all about getting rid of the paper. And so, you know, when, when we look at these flows, which we, which we do a lot, right, what we see is, you know, just, you know, improved volume, improved bidding, uh, you know, uh, the ability for buyers to pay the, 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 the price they, they want to pay. Uh, you know, to get the equipment they need at the time they need it. And so, you know, having something like this on, on, on our marketplace has just been critical to, you know, driving continued success for our sellers. 
And, and uh, primarily for the sellers, uh, one of the questions that we often receive is, well, I already have, you know, one, two, or three lenders that I work with and have a pretty good relationship. How does this work in relation to that? And what, how we answer that question is, we're not trying to disintermediate your current relationships. Think of us as a second chance. So if for some reason you don't have the right financing option through your current relationships, this is a backstop opportunity because through this marketplace, you as a seller, if you're purchasing equipment to sell or for your buyers, this is also the same for buyers if you are already working with, essentially if you're working with lenders as well, um, this is an opportunity for you to now have access to, you know, depending on the, you know, the, the time, anywhere from 15 to 20, 22 lenders covering a broad spectrum, right, of, of different products uh, and different, different types of equipment across the, the entirety of the U.S. and Canada. So you have access if your current lender set isn't solving every financing need that you have. Now this would just be a second chance option. Perfect. So let's kind of walk through a really detailed account of, of how the platform fits into what well, building on Wesley said, um, your current process and your current opportunities or even a customer coming in or, or coming in with, with current options, right? So going back to the, the problem we're talking about, I'm, I'm sure I'm, I'm beating a dead horse, but as we're talking about the problem, the, the friction that we had and that currently exists in walking into a bank and getting a proof of financing, it just it's not it's not great, right? Friction is never good. So it's painful for an equipment buyer a seller, and a bank to connect for a variety of reasons, but without a shadow of a doubt, it's painful for all parties. So the challenge is, why is it painful? Well, the uh, it's painful because the industry lacks any sort of standardized process. It lack, it's, it's large and it's fragmented in, in its process, and it's archaic in its ideas of, of underwriting or, or application taking or, or risk, right? Uh, one bank can have a very different look than another bank does. But they don't. At the end of the day, they should be asking the same questions to get different answers. So the solution that we kind of talked about and identified, and as we talked about that first domino dropping in 2011, 2012, was equipment financing. There's nothing super complex about that. Equipment financing couldn't be as easy as one-click checkout on Amazon. All right, we've all used Amazon. We've all used Amazon Prime. We click on one one-click checkout. That's it. And now we just wait for the shipment notification to hit our email. And, and all we're doing is tracking that, you know, back and forth. And I'm, you know, I'm hitting the re refresh to see when it's going to show up in my front door. There's no, there's nothing in, inherently, you know, complex about the equipment financing process that makes that not a, not a doable thing. So what our platform does and what Currency is, is specialized in doing is we're connecting a buyer, a seller, and a bank together in an efficient manner. And we do that by Delivering, stand, delivering standardization, which is the application. It's the same application regardless of who, um, who, which bank purchases the transaction. We remove the fragmentation from the process by having the same information in the same process for every transaction. And we remove the archaic nature to how the underwriting process works. It's no longer you have to get someone on the right day to approve your transaction or you gotta catch them when they're not at lunch. It's you fill out one application, you go through one process, you want to purchase one piece of equipment, and now the, the word down there says banks for a reason, right? In our, in our old analogy, we talked about the singular bank. What it takes to get from a singular bank to get financing. We're talking about banks, plural. You really do have, in this platform, banks competing for your business, right? And anytime you offer, you deliver competition to a market, right, what happens is, you get usually yeah, competition is going to breed better, better transactions, better deals. So you have banks competing for your business. Sellers, you have you have banks competing for your customers' business, right? Instead of having one or two options, and then if you don't have those options, your your buyer moves on down the road to the next seller who has those options available to them, right? Which is obviously not a good thing. And the buyer now can come in with cash, their own financing, or go to the platform and get get even more optionality through the platform. So building on kind of what Wesley said, let's talk about how it, how it specifically affects sellers. So we've been doing this for a while, so we have a few data points on how it's, how it's affecting sellers just in the real world. So what we've seen is customers who were approved for financing prior to purchasing equipment have an increased buying power of over 350%. What that means is 
So a customer, before they go to your auction or they go to a different uh, seller's auction or they go to your storefront, if they get approved for financing before, they end up actually spending 350% more with you as a seller than they would if they came in with the pre-options pre, pre before they had this platform or just cash. So in a, in, a, in a sense, we're just delivering buying power to the buyer, right, which increases your ability to either sell more equipment or higher, price, higher priced equipment. So with increased buying power, businesses are going to come back early and often for equipment because if they don't have to use the 30 grand that they saved up to purchase this equipment, they get to save that 30 grand and acquire $60,000 in financing. Now that 30 grand is going to be used for something. They're going to either grow their business and need a new piece of equipment, they're going to come back to you again, or they're going to buy two pieces of equipment instead of buying one piece of equipment. So really increasing the size of a buyer's wallet, right, is, is what we're doing, has really had a drastic increase on the price point a seller is able to sell and also the units that a seller is able to have output over, right? They're, not, they're coming in there and delivering an immense amount of options back to their customers. So going through and kind of building on, on this, we'll go through a case study that, that really uh, impacts both from the buyer side and the seller side on that buying power side, right? So we had a customer through Iron Plants platform come to us. A uh, company name was Patino's Trucking, right? It was a trucking business. Uh, they were experiencing a period of immense growth. They were unable to fulfill contracts. And what I mean by that is they were turning away business because they needed a $43,000 dump truck to be able to service the business. They just didn't have the fleet to service the business. The opportunity was there, but the fleet wasn't there. So the customer was not able to purchase the equipment on, cat, uh, on hand with cash on hand, so he couldn't fulfill those needs. So he's turning away business. So his first option was he went to the banks first and said, hey, I need financing for a $43,000 dump truck. The banks told him they needed, they needed to see the dump truck first. So he went and he found a few dump trucks. They said the dump truck was too old or the dump truck was the wrong brand or it had too many miles on it, right? So then he went to the dealerships. And he went to the dealership and said, hey, can you find me a dump truck? They had the same problem. They couldn't find the dump truck that they wanted in the right platform. So kind of building on all this, the customer was able to go to Iron Planet and find that dump truck that he wanted at the price point that he wanted through the online marketplace. And because the platform was there, he was able to get financing at his point of decision. He found the piece of equipment. He got, the in he got an instantane instantaneous financing option at his point of decision. And he was actually approved for $80,000, so nearly 2x his requested amount. And he was on the road generating revenue with that truck within five days of when he found that on Iron Planet. That's a pretty drastic shift from where we were, the options available to that customer prior. And additionally, this customer has actually come back twice for repeat transactions through Iron Planet's platform and through Currency's platform. So he's actually ended up financing $120,000 of new dump trucks because the business is there for him to generate revenue with the truck. So it makes sense for him to take advantage of that. So this is a perfect example of extra buying power being delivered to a customer and then them taking advantage of it, right? And everyone benefiting, seller, buyer, Iron Planet, and the bank on the backside, right? It's so mutually beneficial. And a perfect example of Iron Planet's experience of a customer had a terrible experience in searching for equipment. He we went to the bank first. He had to go find his own equipment. It's a month's process. Went to the dealership first. That model didn't work. So Iron Planner was able to solve his problem with the marketplace, right? And then Currency's platform was able to solve the problem with delivering that buying power to him at his point of decision. He didn't have to wait three months. He didn't have to go through a bank. He didn't have to see what year the vehicle was or how many miles were on it. He knew what he wanted. He was the expert in dump trucks. Currency was the expert in connecting him with the financing. And Iron Planet was the expert in showing him the dump trucks that were available. It was a kind of a win-win all around. So talking about where we're going next, right? So we talked about where we were, the old kind of still exists today, the shift to mobile, right? Well, what's the next big shift? Where's, where, where do we see it going? Where, where's the shift going to take place? What's the next kind of tectonic movement happening in the equipment purchase space? What we're seeing is an increased drive to mobile and online financing, right, which we described. You also have an increased shared economy model. What does that mean? That's the kind of Uber for everything model, right? You go online, this customer with the one of the dump truck, let's say his job only lasted six to eight weeks. It doesn't make sense for him to go and finance that vehicle for you know, 60 months or 72 months, but it makes sense for him to go rent that vehicle for six to eight weeks. And if someone else had that vehicle that wasn't being used, right, and it was just sitting on someone's lot because the opportunity wasn't there, it makes fiscal sense for that person then to rent it to that other party for six to eight weeks so they can generate revenue on it, right? It's the shared economy model. It's increased utilization out of the assets that are in our inventory from a seller, a buyer, from a business's perspective. 
So where's the next big shift, right? We keep talking about the next big shift. The next big shift is artificial intelligence. And artificial intelligence is very broad, right? And it's you know confusing in some sides. It's very detailed and very scientific. But what is it in really practicality, and how does it impact us? Artificial intelligence is just a self-learning. It's just a constant learning software, right? That can be applied to really everything in our life, but specifically in this in this space, it's applied to the search history, right? It's applied to you know when you're purchasing equipment, you know why you're purchasing equipment. Are you having trouble finding it? What's the average time it takes you to find the equipment that you're looking for? Right? It, it helps us understand buying behavior. The big thing for sellers also, it, it helps predict your financing needs. Think about it from this perspective. If we if we have a have the data that tells us that these customers are surging for bobcats, right, in a certain model, it makes sense for a seller to increase their inventory for bobcats because they know the demand for bobcats has increased before someone even walks to your door or clicks on your link or looks at your listing. So the, the opportunity for artificial intelligence to impact our ability to be more efficient with our inventory, more efficient with our predictive nature of when people are going to buy or when people are going to finance, right, and predictive on the searching that people are doing is immense. And it makes all of us more efficient. And I think, you know, just, just, just jumping in here, you know, at, at the end, right, you know, those of you, you know, we've talked about this a lot. Um, you know, we've been we've been making great strides at, at Iron Planet and sort of building out our machine learning and deep learning capabilities, right? You know, the the ultimate goal, right? You know, on our side is is as I said before, being able to match um, buyers and sellers in, in the most efficient way, right? And so, you know, we have a lot of you know historical data here, right? You start to combine that with some of the financing trends that are out there. Right, it just means that that all of us become smarter. Right, we can, you know, we can we can direct buyers to the right piece of equipment when they need it. You know, we can inform sellers with data so that they, you know, if they're thinking about selling equipment, right, they, you know, hey, they can pick the right time to sell that piece of equipment, right, and so on and so on and so on. And so I think, you know, the 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 theme of the theme of all of this, the theme of you know the you know what we do in this webinar series is, you know. How do we begin to partner with our buyers and sellers, or continue to partner with our buyers and sellers, and share more information, right? To to basically, you know, not only buy and sell more equipment, but you know, ensure that you guys are as efficient and as possible outside of the buying and selling of equipment, right? Whether it's financing, whether it's shipping, whether it's you know, pricing equipment, so that you can be more intelligent with your day-to-day -day decisions. You know, that is where we're moving to as a platform, right? And, you know, moving away from, from a company that just, just sells things. So, uh, you know, hopefully this has been a great, great overview of some of the other opportunities, you know, available on the platform. I'm going to, you know, now is a good time to open it up for, for some questions. Um, you know, we've got, a, we've got a bunch of questions in here uh, right now. Um, you know, one of the questions, you know, for, for the currency folks is, Will I know the lenders competing for my business? Why, why don't you guys talk about you know the model there? You know how many lenders are competing? How many lenders you have? You know how that process maybe works on the lender side? Yep, absolutely. So at any given time on the equipment uh, purchase uh, platform, we have anywhere from fifteen to twenty two lenders competing, and they have different obviously needs and wants in terms of the type of purchase that they want or geographic location or assets they would like to purchase. So in a global sense, 15 to 22 on any given transaction can compete for your business. And in terms of your knowing about the lenders, of course. Um, so and, and how that works is, again, back to that customization of your payment options, that, that's how we get the customization options, right? Different lenders have different cu customization options for their payments. So if, you're, if you have a very specific uh, request or a very specific want for your payments, um, you can choose that. And the lender on the platform, you had a robust platform to be able to service all of those requests. Okay. Um, on a similar note, uh, here's a question here at Global, right? In a traditional industry like construction, have you come across any barriers for growth outside of North America and Canada? Um, you know, I know you guys are focused mostly, you know, in, in, in North America right now, but, you know, maybe you can take that on in terms of as you guys think about growth. Uh, yeah, so we're, we're obviously pretty big in, in, in North America and, and Canada as well. 
Um, so what we're what we're looking to do is we have expansion opportunities in kind of the EU area. So our our eyes are there. Uh, I would say we haven't experienced any hiccups or, or hindrances to it because we're not there yet. I, I would imagine that I'm sure there are some some challenges there, but um, we're, we're quickly looking at ways to expand to uh, that market and, and and you know willing to take on any sort of uh, you know challenges that come at us. Okay, cool. All right, here's here's one for me uh, and maybe you guys. Is every unit on Iron Planet supported by this finance option? Um, I believe every 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 it's available on every single unit. We you know we often run um, we often run kind of auctions for other folks. Uh, you'll occasionally see some car auctions. You'll occasionally see uh, you know one of our oil and gas subsidiaries. You know, you know Cruise Energy. You know, you, you may not see uh, the financing available on, on those particular auctions, but I think if uh, uh, the best way to answer that question is that the vast, vast, vast majority of items you're going to see on Iron Planet, you know, come with, with this financing capability. Yes, and, and from currency's perspective, we are um, interested in, in financing. Another way to say it is we're, we're agnostic as to the piece of equipment. What we look for is, is the piece of equipment uh, important or, or relevant for your particular business. If it is, then we are, we're very interested in partnering with you and, and doing that via the Iron Planet Marketplace. Okie dokie. All right, we have, a, we have another one here. Um, the shift to mobile is very topical. Do you really see the traditional mode of financing shifting to online completely? That's yeah, so let, let me, let me, okay, let me kind of talk about this, and I'll describe it in this way, right? So if you look at, as, as, as back to the old, so the traditional, the real traditional model is, is really walking to your bank and hand signing documents and matching up that document with your driver license picture and then waiting for them to go get the equipment, right? That model has already changed. So everything now is electronic. Everything now is, is online. Um, the ability for customers to transact online exists today. So the model that existed before has already changed, right? So the shift to mobile we're talking about is just a continuation of an efficient nature of fine equipment and fine financing. It's not a changing of anyone's really behavior. Customers are, are, have already changed in that atmosphere. They're already online. They're already signed electronic documents. They're already doing everything they can on their phone, so it's not a you know it's not a question of if, is is mobile uh, is a, is a tectonic shift. It's just a it's a natural evolution because it's a more efficient way for a customer to find financing and find their equipment. Okay, um, here's a good one about uh, security. Right, you're saying I can complete my application completely online. What security measures do you take to protect my application? So I'll answer it in two ways. First, um, our chief technology officer uh, is uh, formerly from worked at a worked at Lockheed Martin, uh, which is a defense contractor, and was was involved in at high level in their in their division. It's called DARPA, and DARPA is the like, top secret wing of that. So um, so he is. He is uh, incredibly talented and has a uh, really almost an unmatched experience set and resume in and, and, and the security area, specifically for the military, and then has translated that into building marketplaces. Uh, we are PCI compliant. All of our, all of our data is housed um, you know, in the cloud, Amazon servers as well as redundant servers. So everything that, that we have from a data perspective and storage is completely secure and then as you're filling out the information online it is also under that same level of security and scrutiny so we take security uh, with the highest priority within our organization and and you as uh, buyers or sellers of equipment are are our customer and with Iron Planet our joint customer so absolutely all of your information is safe from the moment you enter it and then well beyond that Cool. <clears throat> Here's a good one. Uh, when you get approved, are you approved for only the one item selling on IP? If it sells too high or I miss out and I want to buy another unit, do I need to apply again? No, it's a great question. So that goes back to our example of that increased buying power, right? So when you submit that one application, you're going to get approved for the 
the most amount of money possible on the platform. Not specifically the amount of money you requested on that on that piece of equipment. So that's how that Patino's trucking company was able to get approved for eighty thousand dollars. They were approved for eighty thousand dollars on a forty three thousand dollar request. So either you can either increase your bidding price, right, or you're able to use that financing and, and, and find a new piece of equipment that matches the the price that you want to pay. Excellent, excellent. All right, another good one. Can I finance equipment located in Canada that I want to import back to the U.S.? Repeat that one again. Can I finance equipment located in Canada? So, the, so, the, so the, the, the equipment they want to buy is actually in Canada, and they want to bring that equipment back into the U.S.? Yes. All right. Simple answer. Yep. Yes. Easy. Um, <laughs> we are capable right. of doing that. <laughs> all right, next one. Will I get credit approval ASAP? What is the speed turnaround? On, on credit approval, it's once you finish the form. Uh, the decisioning engine takes anywhere from 90 to 120 seconds. Yeah, it's essentially okay. it's, it's an instant decision. And then assuming all the information that has been entered is accurate, then that, that approval stands. So it happens immediately. Okay, cool. Um, if I am buying if I'm buying a piece of equipment online and need support with finance, do I call Currency or Iron Planet? I believe you call Currency. Yes. For the financing side, yes, that would be Currency. Uh, for the equipment questions, obviously, that would be Iron Planet. Yeah, that would be us. So, and I think yeah. if you if you if you ask an Iron Planet rep about financing, we will we will most likely you know send you over to Currency and vice versa. And I think you guys you mentioned Correct. before you guys have phone numbers and stuff like that on your once you click through. Yep. Yep. Okay. Yep. Uh, we have another question here. Can I lease equipment, or is it just a loan that is available? Uh, no, it, it's a, it's a loan. We don't, you know, I don't think we're doing leasing. We're not doing leasing of equipment on Iron Planet. We, we, have, yeah. we are doing. If, if you have the available, it's just a financial product, so you can do a, a loan on the equipment. You can also lease the equipment um, through us as well. And, okay. And so we use we use the term equipment finance as a as a proxy for either actually engaging in a true finance or in an equipment lease. And there are a variety of, of types of equipment leases. So we can help, uh, our team here is able to help navigate uh, any of those questions on a, on a you know, per case basis. Uh, and, and so we offer the complete spectrum of equipment lease options as well as a true finance. Okay, there you have it. Um, what other global markets are actually in your pipeline for expansion? Uh, so the, the next immediate, I'd say in the next probably 12 months, 8 to 12 months, is the, uh, it's the UK. We're, we're in talks uh, with the UK, um, but if the, if the individual that is posing that question has uh, some relationships or there's a particular country that you would like us to look into, um, for specific reasons, we're happy to, to discuss it post this, you know, uh, webinar. Perfect. Um, and and the last question we got is is one I will I will wrap up with. Um, the the last question uh, is this uh, is, is this presentation available online? Uh, yes, it is. Uh, so both the presentation. And the, the and the full recording will be available online. It will be posted to uh, the Iron Planet website, and I believe we will be sending out an email to to all participants with with that particular link. Um, so with that, I don't think there are any more questions here, unless somebody wants to throw one in at the last second. I don't see anyone typing. Um, so I want to thank the folks from Currency, uh, and I want to thank all of you guys uh, and folks online. Uh, thank you for participating today, and uh, you know we have an auction tomorrow, uh, so you know there's a good opportunity to go out and buy some equipment, and you can finance it as well. Thank you, everybody. Thank Appreciate you your time. Right. Have a good one. Right. Bye bye.